I know what you're thinking. Man, I wish I could make one of those. Today's your lucky day. I'm gonna teach you how to make one of these. There's some plans, there's some information in the link below. You're gonna make one of these special moose head shields and I'm gonna teach you to use some of the gear. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a win-win. All right, let's go. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome to our wood shop. Let's go, come in. All right guys, before we get into it, you need to grab this document. It's in the links below, uh, Word document. You gotta print it off. This is for your reference. This is the front page. The second page, this is the one you use. This is our outline for our shields. This is the actual moose head I want you to use. It says on the front, use this guy. Um, that's the one we need. We've got to transfer that across. And last of all, I want you to use, this is kind of a logo that I pinched the nose from, but this is the exact size that I want you to do it. So we've got to cut that one out and transfer them onto our pieces of timber. Um, again, I'm going to show you a few things as we go. So. Uh, Sorry, but most importantly, I've got my offside and my beautiful daughter Lexi's here to help us out today because she wants to learn a few things as well in the wood shop. All right, let's get cracking. All right, before we get into it, this is a bunch of um, 12 mil plywood. Um, plywood works perfect for this kind of project, um, in particular this one. It's, what I love about plywood, it's always nice, dead flat, it's uniform. This is all 12 mil. These are all just offcuts from random jobs here at home and a few from at school. Um, the good news for you guys is that Lexi and I, we're gonna make uh, like two, three, four of them if we can. And um, Lex come up with a good idea that we're going to give some of them away. So I'll put some details about the comp in it later, but I've been told we need to... Like, comment, share, and follow. Like, comment, share, and follow. Um, that'd be great. We love you guys. All right, I'm going to show you a couple things, but all right, there's a couple ways you can do it, and depending on who's helping you out, if it's young kids or not, um, you can either just with a pair of scissors cut out your shape as best you can, work out where you need it, and trace it on your board, nice and easy. Um, I'm a fan of the Stanley knife. Uh, or one of those little hobby knives if you want um, to cut it out. Make sure we've got a cutting mat. Make sure you're cutting it out on um, a piece of scrap. Uh, or, I don't mind this idea either. So, on the back of it in a pencil, you scribble the back of the outline. I'll just do a little bit, just to show you. Place your piece of paper exactly where you need it to be. So somewhere around there. And any old biro, it has to be a biro, not a felt tip pen. And as best you can, you trace it. While you're doing this, make sure your paper doesn't move on you. And you should see a bit of an outline. So, either way, I don't mind. Um, I think we might cut all these out because we've got a few of them to do and it's easier to trace. All right, you can watch this bit in fast forward.
next bit's easy. We're just tracing our shields on. Uh, Lex and I have had a chat. We're going to try to get three. So, use your um, scrap as best you can. So you can chuck one there, we'll rotate it, pop one there. Make sure you put them in the corners. Might as well try to save your scrap material. Bugs me when kids at school just shove stuff in the centre and cut waste it all. Hey guys, Moose here, welcome back, it's day two. Yesterday we got to transfer all our moose heads and our shields onto our plywood. Um, oh, welcome to my reception area of our wood shop too. Today I want to get into a tiny bit with the drop saw. Um, I'm not going to do a full demo with that one, but there is a link to a proper video that I really suggest you watch. Uh, we're going to drop saw and we're going to play on the bandsaw. I'm going to teach Lexi a few things on the bandsaw too. Um, Love what you love what you guys bring to it. Thanks for liking and subscribing and don't forget to leave your comments. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, I hope you can see me okay. The lighting's not amazing in the container. Um, first and kind of very much most important is always your safety. Um, I love the projects that we do, but looking after ourselves is most important. So make sure you've always got your PPE. So on the apron, I've got special glasses that are impact resistant. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and obviously hearing protection. All right, I'll just do a couple quick cuts on this, a couple pointers. Um, again, watch the main video. For this one, we're just going to cut our two moose heads off. So anywhere around here is fine. Make sure you clamp your project down. Clamp. It's against the fence. And most important, if there's only one thing you get out of this is give both your hands a job. So my spare hand has a job because it's so it's out of the way. I like where I'm cutting. Yeah, I need some power. All right, I'm back. Both hands have a job. Again. This drop saw, it's amazing. It's one of those tools you have to be confident but cautious with. Um, please watch the video, it it's, explains everything. All right, let's get into the bandsaw. All right, a couple hot tips with the video. Um, I'll keep this one brief. If you want a more, uh, I guess, step-by-step -step guide to keeping you nice and safe, check out the video. Um, there's one in my links. And if I'm clever enough, I'll do the link somewhere on the screen. Um, again, obviously we don't want to damage anything that we can't grow back. So please look after yourselves. Bandsaw, first thing is get rid of what we don't need. So I don't need my slide today. Fence I can get out of the way. Because we're not really using that today either. And most important, Make sure you lower the guard here. The idea is it's low enough so that the timber we're cutting fits through and nothing else. We don't want to be able to get any of our little fingers or anything through there. So this is nice and safe. 
Uh, I apologise, it's super loud, so um, we'll, we'll put some tunes on for that part. Um, you're going to hear me say this a lot, and I chat to the kids all the time about it. You want to cut on the waist side of your lines. So this is my shield, I want to be just outside the line. Only just. Be nice and brave. If you give yourself too much room, it just means you've got a lot of sanding to get rid of. So be nice and brave just outside the line. Um, again, if we cut inside the lines, I can't get you that timber back. So, waist side of the line, just outside the line of the pieces you want to keep. Um, let's get into it. I'll take the camera in, we'll zoom it in closely, um, and uh, see how we go. All right, I'll do a little bit and then I'll chuck Lexi on after a few pointers. Apologies, it's super loud. Enjoy the rock. Lex did amazing just then. Now we're going to cut the moose heads, the noses, they're a bit easier. Um, don't worry about the eyes just yet, we'll cut them out a bit later. Uh, simple design, I do want you to cut through here, open up the mouth a little bit because we can use them as, um, or I'm going to use mine as an apron hook. Um, the only other point I wanted to make is if you find you're traveling somewhere and you don't like where you're going, um, like if you feel like you're going too far, just stop as soon as you kind of have gone a smidge too far, go back and reassess. The only thing you can't really do is try not to backtrack too far out of any cuts on a bandsaw. And after a while, you'll get to a point where you'll hear the bandsaw kind of make a bit of a screechy kind of sound if you try and do too much of a curve on it. The bandsaw will usually tell you that it's um, you're asking a bit too much of it. Um, I'll get into it, I'll cut one out. Let's cut the other one out. Alright, let's go. I was just saying to Lex, she was picking at a few little parts and she'd been way too picky. Um, you'll see in a sec, we'll use the file and a bit of sandpaper. Um, everything can be cleaned up. I think I must have used a scroll saw last time for this, so depending on what toys you've got at home, leave it as is. Um, but I will jump on the scroll saw because I want to do... Um, I'll show you how we're going to do those. So I'm going to drill a hole scroll saw we might scroll saw those just because we can uh, either way depending on what you got at home you could just draw the eye on draw the eyes on it really doesn't matter um, Lex this is great all right we have to juggle some stuff around It's tooth hurdy. I got a dentist appointment. <laughs> All right, right the gags. <laughs> oh man. Right, before we jump on the scroll saw, my hot tip is, if I had to choose between a scroll saw and a bandsaw, and money was an object, which for my family it always is, I would get a small bench top bandsaw. This one's kind of cool because it's on a mobile base, but it's bigger than I kind of need for a lot of the things that we do. And the scroll saw, I love it every now and then because it's actually quite handy like for these eyes, but it is pretty much only for real lightweight work. And I'm hoping you'll outgrow 
a scroll saw pretty quick, first get yourself a bandsaw. Obviously, get the best you can, what you can afford, but um, the smaller bench top ones are perfectly fine. All right, let's get into the scroll saw. Uh, exactly like on the bandsaw, you push the guard up so it's just above your piece of timber. blade. We need the blade out because obviously we've got to get it out but I need to know exactly that distance so I can drill holes bigger than that. show you how to clean these up nice and easy all you need is just a couple basic files a bit of sandpaper if you don't have any files all you need is sandpaper it just makes it a smidge easier and I'm going to introduce you to this is our belt sander um, I'll show you a jig I've made and I'm going to point to a video we've done earlier um, the jig we've made turned a belt sander that I never used into uh, a precision sanding machine. Um, I use it all the time now, it's much better than me using it before just destroying jobs. So check this out. Oh, my hot tip as well. I have Sorry, before I get into it, my hot tip is you'll notice it's got a busted ear or antler. It wasn't meant to be like that. It's because I had this in the vise and I was working away and I didn't have enough support where it gets kind of a little bit weak. So make sure whatever you're working on is close to the vise. Support it with your other hand as well. So close to the end. One kind of a hot tip about plywood is the grade of plywood varies a lot. So depending on what you've got, you might have little bits of tear out at the back or little chips that have come off. Please don't sweat it. This is just a, a moose shield for fun and learning some new skills. Um, sorry. But I do suggest you get rid of some of the lines if you've got them on there. Um, a rubber is a great idea, just as a rubber, use it as you should. You can use sandpaper, but I just want to show you one thing. It's plywood. It's layers of timber kind of laminated together. But if you sand too hard, you'll actually sand through, I hope you can see it, the top layer. And if that happens, it does kind of look daggy. So I'm a fan of just using the rubber. Rub out the little bits of line, some of them, some of them around the edges. 
some of them if they've got old student names on them. Um, so we're going to clean these up and then we're going to put them together. So. All right, this is my um, impact driver. Um, I love it to death. I'm also lucky enough to have a cordless, one of each. If you've got the coin, I highly recommend it. But in particular, this little guy, um, it's my go-to for nearly everything now. Phillips bit, countersunk bit, normal drill bits. Um, I'm gonna chuck a video up. I'm hoping the link's up there now. Uh, explaining all the drill bits, how the cordlesses work, um, a bit of a DIY for all of that stuff. So if you need to, go and have a look. But we'll get into this one. The screws I've got are the perfect length that they can go through our moose head where we need it, not too far into his nose. Um, and they're a good size for when we put attach these as well. So this is how we put it together. First of all, I'll do one and Lexi can do the one next to us. Um, pick which side you want to be your better side. So this is the front. I want you to do a line down the centre. Nice and light, don't do it too dark, because you've got to rub it off later anyway. And on the back, while you've got your pen and ruler, just give yourself a nice straight line using the tops the top corners, give yourself a straight line while you're at it. Is that one mine? Yeah. For the moose head, decide which is going to be the front and back. So this is the, that's the front. So on the back of it, I want you to draw a line down the center. Take a couple measurements, work out where your middle is. You should be able to eyeball this one. I want to line down the centre. And last of all with his head. So these two are going to get screwed together. It's important where, so it's important that they line up, but it's also important where you do these two holes. So I want you to take into account, I don't want any screws to be anywhere near an edge, top or bottom, or anywhere kind of near his mouth. So I'm going to chuck them, I reckon I'll put one there, and I'll miss his eye, and I'll put one there. This is plywood, so you should see the center piece of ply. I want two crosses. Using those, line up your nose so he's in the center. Use those two marks to transfer these across. So that's where I'm gonna screw through. They're gonna match each other, and then we'll glue it to the front. And add a little line. The top so you know where the centers are. So while Lexi marks out hers, I'll do a bit of drilling. So it's a small countersunk bit. The, the, um, the gauge on it's not real big, but it's perfect for the screws that we're using. Again, for the how to, go have a look at the video. Um, I'll have this one first. Make sure it's exactly where you want in the middle. Match them up. What I love about these is the trigger, you squeeze it a smidge, goes nice and slow. So you have control over it all the time. This one, our bench we're not particularly uh, concerned about so I'm happy to drill into it but what I want to do is drill a little bit so I get a bit of the countersunk. The idea with the countersunk is it's going to slide into the countersunk shape of your screw. Just do a little countersunk, I don't, we don't need a massive one. If you've got a little person helping you, um, parents, you hang on to it. Let them play with the drill. 
or even better, some of the offcuts, they might want to have a practice. A little bit more. Lex, can you can drill yours? Um, obviously, it's up to you guys how you want to mount them. You could screw the whole thing to the to a board, wall, wherever you want to chuck them on. We're going to use these. Make sure you mount them the correct way. The idea is that it's going to lock into position. So we're using our line at the back. Be a bit careful. Um. We pre drilled these. Need a bit of glue. Uh, I'm using the vise just because it's better. Better. Extra pair of hands. So I've marked a center line. Sorry, I've marked a line that shows me where the center is. A little bit of glue. And we'll chuck a screw in. So whenever you use the cordless or a drill of any sort, try to have everything in line with your shoulder. If it doesn't quite pull up nice and tight, Back it off. And back in. Still like where it is. We'll do the rest in fast forward. Alright, for the last bit, we're going to hang ours here. Um, obviously, wherever you're hanging yours, it's up, totally up to you. Making sure I've got it going the right way. Make sure to get your shoulder behind everything. That's where ours is going to live. <gasps> and it works. So, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you learned a few things out of it. I hope you guys um, had a look at some of the other demo videos. Please do, it's important that you're nice and safe. Um, and send me photos of where yours ends up. And don't forget the competition. If you like, subscribe, share, comment. and leave a comment about how great we're going, um, I'll send three of these out. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Be good. Stay safe.
Alright, welcome to the back of our container. This is where this is our it's trash. Alright. <laughs> to say it again. Alright. Take three. Alright, a couple hot tips with a bandsaw. Again, check out the video, it's a more extensive. Um, extensive what? 